every negotiation is a different beast and evolves into a series of discussions and mediations between all parties, which is not extremely far from relationship management, where every action, for example, anger, will bring a reaction. So what is the problem? Well, there is no problem if we are already emotionally intelligent. According to the emotional intelligence theory, a negotiation is 70% emotional intelligence, where the remaining 30% intelligence represents the rational facts or logic. And believe me, 70% emotional intelligence does imply a lot of emotions will need to be managed. So, what is emotional intelligence theory? First and foremost, self-awareness, sensing the emergence of any positive or negative emotions, then manage and channel these emotions in a constructive way. We want to get emotionally in the right frame of mind. Secondly, the same applies to the emotions of the other person or party. We want to engage them productively, and this implies hearing, not just what they are just saying, but hearing what they are expressing in their tone of voice and body language. There are many kinds of people in the world and we can never assume that everyone will react to our strategies in the same way. Nonetheless, in a good negotiation, we will need to empathize, which means understand concerns and respecting each other's values and constraints. We will need to manage our emotions because we all use emotions to inspire others and ourselves. And we also need to build relationships, most importantly to build trust. And all of these have one thing in common, emotion. Knowing the market and knowing the numbers will no doubt help us with creating the rational and logical messages. However, the question is, how do we best tackle this big emotional dilemma and how to generate positive emotions to get the other party to want to work with us collaboratively. Indeed, it can be advantageous to express emotional messages with the relevant emotions, for example, anger, but only if we can control our emotions. And we need to be careful because if we get too carried away with the emotion, this will decrease the positive effect of the message. For example, anger can be a strategic tool in a negotiation if we can control ourselves and only expose as much moderate anger as we need to. However, if we do this too often, it will become unbelievable and will lose its strategic power. It is normal to feel some level of anxiety in a negotiation. However, we should not allow self-doubt and insecurity to sink in, which will make us defensive. So the rule is to always act, never react. For instance, if the other person says our price is too high, we should not immediately react to it and start to defend our price. If we do, we will lose focus on the core of the negotiation because we are now using all our brain power trying to calm down and trying to remember all the 1001 rational logical arguments that justify the price. A bad idea because we lose twice. The other person can see us as hostile and even not trustworthy. And when we get angry, we cannot listen effectively to the other party. We cannot understand them and we cannot build relationships. Controlling emotions, at least our emotions, is important. If our emotions get too strong, we should find ways of subduing them 
that works for us. For example, take a deep breath, count to 10 before reacting, go take a short walk, or even ask for a bigger break. If still really bad, consider changing the negotiation location or even the negotiation team. The founder and director of the Harvard International Negotiation Program, Dr. Daniel L. Shapiro, in the book Beyond Reason, Using Emotions as You Negotiate, which he co-authored with Roger D. Fisher, a Harvard professor, introduced the core concerns framework. According to Dr. Daniel L. Shapiro, in any negotiation, irrespective of the setup, for example, employee and employer over a pay rise, if we can deal with the following five core concerns, we will generate positive emotions and get people wanting to work with us. The first core concern is appreciation. Does the other person feel appreciated, heard, understood and valued by us? The second core concern is autonomy. Are we imposing a decision on the other person? Are we respecting their autonomy or just telling them what to do without consulting them under the pretext of negotiating? The third core concern is affiliation. What is the emotional connection between us and that person? Is it adversarial, confrontational, or is it a win-win collaborative connection? The fourth core concern is status. Are we disrespecting the other party based on their status, for example, youngest employee? Or are we demeaning the other person based on their gender or age? The fifth core concern is role. Does the other person feel like they are fulfilling meaningful role in the negotiation? Or does the other person feel like they are just keeping the seat warm? Human beings are not computers. Needless to say, these five core concerns apply both ways. And if either party is denied these core concerns, this will kill any cooperation and the negotiation is likely to be a failure. The psychologists B. Fair and J. Russell in their 1984 article titled concept of emotion viewed from a prototype perspective notes that everyone knows what an emotion is until asked to give a definition. Then it seems no one knows. However, what we can say for sure is that emotions are very important in negotiations. May everything you do make you happy.